Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Bridge from the Past. I'm your host, Mary, and this series is all about using art as a starting point to think about important topics in American history and civics. Today, we're looking at a lithograph or print of Abraham Lincoln writing the Emancipation Proclamation. Why is this document so important in US history? Let's jump in and see. Once again, we're thinking about what this image, our starting image, can tell us about the Emancipation Proclamation and its importance in US history. Whenever you have an image as a primary source, it's important just to make some observations before you can really go any further with your analysis. If you're using the handout that accompanies this video, go ahead and pause here and make some observations of your own. Here are some things that I immediately notice. First of all, it's a mess in Abraham Lincoln's room. It almost looks like he's a hoarder. There's papers everywhere. His hair looks a little disheveled and it looks like he has one slipper off and his jacket sort of strewn about over here. There's light streaming in. It's almost like he pulled an all-nighter. That's what it makes me think of in the morning light is sort of shining through his window. Um, I can see like a statue falling down. I notice there's a sword over here. It looks like a map. So there's a lot of pieces. It's a very busy picture and I need a little more context before I can go any further. So one important thing to note is our title and our date. So we have Lincoln writing the Proclamation of Freedom or the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863. So this was actually a, a painting by the artist David Gilmore Blythe, and then it was turned into a lithograph or print and mass produced by a printing company, also in 1863. So as a print, it's something that would be seen by a lot of people. And the key thing here that I underlined is 1863. So we are in the middle of the American Civil War and you have this sword here. And down here, I have a map of the rebel states all alluding to the, the idea that we're in the midst of a very bloody, bloody fight. The title references a proclamation of freedom, but the Civil War wasn't initially about slavery. Abraham Lincoln was elected on a ticket to preserve the Union, and this is a key piece right here. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit on our picture. All right, so this is January 1st, 1863. Lincoln is in the middle of writing this proclamation. So it says a proclamation here. It's a still a little fuzzy, but here's that map of the rebel states that I mentioned just a minute before. But I can see, like strewn about here, there are a lot of references to people and groups that were fighting or wanted to end slavery for a very long time. And you can start over here. There's a memorial from the Quakers. So the Quakers were a religious group who had constantly petitioned against slavery even before the founding of the United States. I can see history books. I can see over here a cross. I can see chains. I can see um, courts. That's a map of the world, something with Daniel Webster, so another great uh, statesman. So there's all these allusions to people and groups that had tried to end slavery before Lincoln's time, before the time of the Civil War. In Lincoln's lap, he is holding a holy Bible. Underneath the Bible is the Constitution of the United States. So again, it's still a little fuzzy, but you've got to trust me here in the Library of Congress that that is the um, Constitution in his lap. Lincoln personally abhorred slavery, but he wanted to end slavery through constitutional means. And something that this picture does, which is a little misleading, is it makes you think he sort of did this overnight. He was up late thinking, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? And ah, the Emancipation Proclamation happened. But that's not actually the case. What you have here is a draft, a preliminary draft of the Emancipation Proclamation, and this is in July of 1862. So this is six months before it was actually published, and you can see here there are some scribbles. So this is something that Lincoln had really been mulling over and talking with his cabinet for a very long time. I'm going to go back into our image. Lincoln will use his powers as commander-in-chief, so a military action to 
end slavery in the states in rebellion. So there are limitations to this proclamation. It doesn't say anything about the border states, but it is a signal that the goal of the war is not just to preserve the union, but to have a union without slavery. And in the closing of the Emancipation Proclamation is this line, which I think is so perfect. It says, quote, and upon this act, sincerely believed to be an act of justice warranted by the Constitution upon military necessity, I, Lincoln, invoke the considerate judgment of mankind and the gracious favor of Almighty God. Again, this is something that he personally signs as the president, as commander in chief. And you have this idea, he's invoking this principle of justice and you have the scales above his head so the scales being the symbol of justice justice being a founding principle that the united states is built on he invokes this he invokes the idea of morality he invokes the constitution in putting forth this document which is officially published on january 1st 1863 we started by asking what this image could tell us about the Emancipation Proclamation and its importance in U.S. history. We learned about some of the symbolism in the print, Lincoln's goal of using constitutional means to end slavery, and how the Emancipation Proclamation signaled that the Civil War was a war to end slavery from here on out. But as always, there is so much more to this story, and now I'm going to turn it over to you. What questions do you have? What comments do you have? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you learned something, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to be in the know about other resources and contests, anything to help you through the school year. I'll be back soon with a new image to help us think about important topics in U.S. history and civics. Until then, everybody, take care. Well... I'm done studying. That video filled in all the blanks for me. Well, just in case you need more help, the Bill of Rights Institute's YouTube channel has tons of videos on American history, government, and civics. From primary source document breakdowns to historical image analysis, whether you're studying for a test or just interested in more, they've got something for you. And they put out more videos all the time. Really? Well, in that case, there's no harm in brushing up on a few more topics. Check out another video here and be sure to subscribe here so you are never left out.